Before I started developing the game Stormbreak, I decided to go sit down and sort of build a concept demo of what I could do and what I maybe was planning on doing and that kind of stuff. And I made a video of that and I stuck it on this YouTube channel. It may even be part of this playlist. And the idea behind it was just get a little bit of a understanding, a cursory understanding of the way the tools work and all that kind of stuff. So I can start developing something a little more substantial, something I consider to be an actual game, and sort of pick up what I didn't learn while making the demo along the way. And in some respects, that did work. I did learn a few things, and it did give me enough to get started, but it didn't really teach me enough to be able to really put things together the way I eventually decided I wanted to do it. While I was playing, uh, while I was putting together a level several hours into the game, and I'm almost chronologically building this thing from the beginning to the end, I realized, you know what, let me go back and check out the beginning of the game. And it was something I hadn't play-tested in a while, and I hadn't looked at the level in a while or anything like that. And I realized that well, it suffered from a lot of problems and a lot of weird little inefficiencies that I didn't understand, mistakes that I didn't understand I was making at the time, and weird little design inconsistencies and bizarre design decisions that I had made that I eventually learned better and stopped doing it. And then, sort of, uh, well, I wanted to go back and fix it. And it ended up almost requiring me to rebuild the entire first level. Now let's go take a quick ganders at what I did here. Now I'm going to load up another version of this engine here and bring it over here. This was the original first level of the game. Now I can't fire it up. I can't fire it up and show you because of some formatting compatibilities. I changed around some things so it's not going to work anymore. But that doesn't really matter. It was a simple cutscene, essentially, that happens at the beginning of the game. Character starts here, he walks up to here, and then starts talking to these three characters. And those characters, uh, everything's automated, you don't have any control over it. Then, your character is, it fades to black, and your character is transported over to here. And you walk over to here, and you interact with this character... And another character starts from over here, walks over here, interacts with everybody, and then you have a fight. And that's where everything happens. And it actually, maybe even the original version that I made a video of a long time ago had the entire thing happen in this area over here. It wasn't even anything over here, maybe I added that later. And <laughs> yeah. not only did it sort of lock out any sort of interactivity with the player, which was actually my intention for making this was to give the player a little bit of interactivity in the beginning before I started putting in like uh, story heavy moments and all that kind of stuff I screwed that up pretty bad I didn't even realize it not only that but I have a lot of weird little ways of doing things like when I was trying to display the bust of the character the picture that goes alongside with the character's dialogue, I the way I decided to do it was to create a series of things in this engine are called common events. Let me change around my mouse real quick. Common events. Boom. So you have all of these different characters and then I would load up the common event and a variable which I would set would determine what face we're looking at. Whether it would be a, a happy face, sad face, indifferent angry, whatever. So, when I started doing this, for some stupid reason, I thought a good idea would be to have actually two variables, and I would set them both prior to this, having a character speak. So I would control variable, can variable number one, character. I would set it to four. And then I would call another common event, a method or function or whatever you want to call it, called speaker finder, which would determine which character lined up with that character variable that I had set. A speaker finder would then take the variables taken 
uh, for both the face being used for the character, as well as the emotion that character is supposed to be expressing, and display that character's portrait on the screen. Uh, it didn't really seem like that big of a deal in here until I started f changing around. Um, see, look at this. Uh, character number one, speaker finder. Character number four, speaker finder. Character number one, speaker finder. And it would take me a little while to get through all that kind of crap. And when I started slapping together character dialogues and stuff that use the different emotions, and I'm setting two variables for every time a character has to speak. Oh, man. That is not fun, I tell you what. And plus, it seems a little bit weird. Like, I can look at this. I should be able to, by looking at the code or whatever I'm looking at here, the event, uh, I should be able to tell exactly who is speaking. The character Ansel is speaking here, but I can't see that here unless I memorized what control variable uh, that was. Number one was Ansel. Number four was Ambrose. Blah, 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 blah. And there... And the common events for displaying the displaying the character bus were shared in space with the common events they did at various other things. So it, <laughs> I could easily screw this up, and it was more work than it was worth doing. More work than it was worth. So later on in the game, let's say I, uh, here we go. A little bit further down, instead of going and calling multiple event, uh, setting multiple variables, and then going and calling the speaker finder, I'm now calling the common event for that bust individually. I don't know why I didn't think of just doing this to begin with. Maybe I thought that I would be able to do something procedurally or whatever, but that doesn't. I didn't have a chance in hell of working. So I'm starting to call uh, call events properly now. But I also went back to this first map and changed it around a little bit. Now let's uh, let's set this game up a little bit so we can see the beginning. How much I had changed everything around a bit. Yeah, that you you won't see that. I added interactivity in the beginning. I also increased the size of the map, almost completely recreated it, and I put a sort of in I needed to have this text show, so I put that in a separate event that's running parallel to the um, the other time, and having it so, while you're controlling around, the screen will fade to black after a set period of time, and show you the text that you need it to. So I can get a, get through all of the information with uh, seemingly, not not really, but seemingly random interrupts to go and show you the dialogue, what the character's thinking, and all that kind of stuff. Now, I, of course, had to make the level long enough. It, it's not very long, and I will have encounters, battles, and all that kind of stuff, but I had to make it long enough so that you wouldn't be able to get to the end of here and trigger the dialogue with one of these characters before you, uh... Oh, jeez. Why is she dead? That shouldn't be. <laughs> I had to set it up so you'd be able to get all the way up here and speak to these characters before you you would see all the fades to black before you got up here. And then you would go over here and... Oh, jeez, he should have disappeared. you get up here and then the dialogue would continue like it did in the original demo. Adds a little bit more interactivity. The map is larger. That's a wide view of it. Now I'm going to do a little bit more work on here to make it make it a little bit better. But I just needed to add a little bit more interactivity with the characters, uh, with the player, and all that kind of stuff. Also, something else that I can show you if I really want to. Perhaps I can do it here is a very early example of a map that I'd put together. I think I need to place my player character here. It may not run, but we're going to give it a try. Anytime now. Oh, no. No saving. No loading. Nope, it's not going to work because I deleted some of the... I deleted some of the scenes and some of the data and all that kind of stuff. 
But here was a very early, just sort of a uh, concept demo that I put together. Not the one I was talking about before, but something I put together for a scene that I had created in the game. It happens a couple of hours in. And it's the Fort Festing. Now, this was... Now, we had seen this in a previous episode that I have on this playlist. But this is an earlier version of the map that is really just as wide as it needs to be for all the scene to take place, because it's a cutscene. And you can see how simplistic everything is. Everything is very sparse. Everything looks kind of crappy. It was thrown together using the editor and what simple crap I could pull off. We have a couple of trees up here. Character, 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 character. These characters down here, they walk up here. I may not have actually shown this specific specific, specific scene before, but here is just an over a wide shot of it. Now this map also uh, exists in this version. It's a little bit screwed up. It still won't run though, and some of the graphics got screwed up, but uh, here is the actual version that exists in the game. Here it is. Now take a look at that. That looks substantially different. You can still see it's the same kind of thing. Building, building, there is a building here instead of some trees. Everything looks a lot better because I put a lot more effort into designing the map. But, uh, boom, early, boom, what I have now. Now, this was essentially the best I could put together. I was still learning the tools and all that kind of stuff at the time. And just to show how much better I am at doing this kind of thing now, and I bet there are people out there who are way better at this than I am, because I look at this and they don't even think it's that good. But that is much better. Now, um, there's some weird little programming things I screwed up in here, but let's, uh, you know what, I'm not going to load this one up. But anyway, just want to show that I am learning a lot of things and if I ever manage to finish this project or even if I don't finish this project I'm definitely going to start something new after this and I'm going to put some work and into a next project and taking the lessons that I had learned by doing this over to that I think perhaps I could produce much better results in a much quicker time frame but anyway thank you for watching I hope to have some more details available soon and goodbye.